So what I have here is a spring collar. This is a, a weightlifting accessory. It's meant to hold the weights on an Olympic weight bar. And I recently needed to model something like this, but a lot smaller. I needed this inner diameter to be about five millimeters uh, for a different project that I was working on. And this turned out to be a really challenging uh, modeling task. So I thought I would do a video uh, of what I finally came up with after about, oh, I think five different attempts. And, uh, and show you how I went about it. And if you've got a better way of doing it that ends up with a more robust parametric model, uh, I'd love to hear about it in the comments or better yet, record your own video and uh, uh, upload it and I will pin it. Uh, in the comments of this one so we can all uh, kind of improve our technique. Anyway, here's what I came up with. Okay, to get started, I am running FreeCAD version uh, 0.19. This is a Git build uh, from the development branch and um, I'm on Linux Mint 19.3. Um, now for a design like this, I usually look for uh, some axis of symmetry so I can model just half of the part or a part of the part and then uh, copy it, mirror it, rotate or something to create the rest of it. Uh, that simplifies the design a lot and uh, lets me uh, move a little bit faster. So in this case, I'm going to model half of the spring from the center line and one leg and then I'm going to uh, create the other half by duplicating that and we'll get to that in a minute. So uh, I'm going to start by going to the part workbench and I'm going to create a, uh, a primitive and there's a drop down on the primitive uh, menu to create a helix and the pitch on this is going to be 0 0.7, the height is going to be 1 millimeter and the radius is going to be uh, 2.55. Uh, I'll leave the angle at zero and the coordinate system is right-handed and I'll create it. And when you create with this, it doesn't dismiss the, uh, the, the tool panel. So the temptation is to hit it again, uh, but it does create the helix in the tree, uh, which is, is uh, so we just need one copy of that. If you create two, just delete one. Uh, so now what I need to do is create a, a sketch for the profile of this that I'm going to sweep along it to create the, the thickness of the wire. So I'll switch to the part design and I'll create a body and I'm going to create a sketch. And, you know, looking at that helix, uh, what I want is my sketch to be perpendicular to uh, the path that it's going to follow. So in that case, it means uh, you can see where the helix is at here and it, uh, so I'm going to sketch on the XZ plane and if I zoom up you'll see that uh, you can imagine I'm kind of looking end on to the wire here so I'll draw um, a circle and I want it to lock onto the uh, the axis line here and I want the distance from the center point to the center of the circle to be the same as the radius of the uh, helix that I drew so that's 2.55. And then the radius of the, uh, the circle is going to correspond to the, uh, um, uh, to the wire that I'm using. So I'm going to set a diameter constraint on that and set it at 0 0.65. And you'll see that I'm fully uh, constrained now in the sketch. So I can close that. Now if I wanted to, I could uh, select that sketch and do the sweep along path. And uh, I'll just, I just select an edge and say add the edge. Uh, I think you have to hit add edge first and then select it. And the same thing again. And you see that I get the, the coil that uh, is forming the first part of the spring. But I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to save the sweeping part to the end. So I'm going to cancel that and leave it uh, uh, just with the, uh, the sketch. And, and I can drag my helix also into the body. Uh, so I've got the, uh, this link, which is the base feature, pointing back to the helix. And so I should have just the base feature and the sketch in, uh, in my body right now. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is create uh, the, the, 
the sketch of the the leg uh, coming out from so th basically the, the the two legs are gonna cross each other so I need to, to uh, continue this line down and then uh, and then the bend and in order to do that sketch I need to uh, I need to have a plane that I can sketch on and I don't want to draw on the center line I want to draw on a plane where this point uh, the, the the last point in the helix exists so I'm gonna select that point and create a datum plane and you can see that that now looking uh, kind of edge on to my helix you'll see that it created the plane going right through that last point which is what I want so now I can um, select the the uh, the datum plane oh let me say okay on that now I can select the plane and create a sketch on that plane so um, so here's our circle uh, we're ending here and we want to continue this line down and then uh, turn it into the leg so I'm gonna select the uh, polyline tool and I'm gonna lock onto this point I'm gonna draw out and then using the M key I'm gonna create an arc and then I'm gonna uh, create a uh, continue with a straight line out a ways and and that's it I'm, I've got so I've got two straight segments and an arc between them and now I can kind of um, play around with this to get the shape that I want and uh, and lock it down so one thing I want to do is I want my distance from this point to uh, this point to be uh, 12, uh, 12 millimeters overall and I don't need the uh, uh, the bend I want the bend a little bit sharper so I'll make the uh, the radius smaller and I want the angle between the leg at the end and the center line to be fixed uh, so we'll set the angle on that at uh, we'll set it at 15 degrees and we'll set the radius of the bend to um, we'll set it to five degree or, or five millimeters that might be too big Yeah, I think that's too big. Let's set it at half that, 2.5 millimeters. That looks a little bit better. So now I need to set the uh, the length of the straight part coming off from uh, from the the helix. I'll set a linear on that at uh, three and a quarter, and I'll set the angle on this as well to. Uh, 125 and none of these dimensions are, are critical I'm just kind of picking them uh, based on what I think looks right uh, but since it's all in the sketch I can come back and revise this later if it isn't correct okay so that gives me the leg coming down from that and you can imagine this being mirrored over so that might still be a little bit wide for the uh, between the legs but I'm gonna leave it as it is right now so the next thing I need to do is the the leg is going to curve um, into this plane and double back on itself. So I need another uh, plane that I can draw on. So I'm going to hide this datum plane. I'm going to do the same thing that I did again uh, or did before, uh, but this time I'm going to choose two points. I'm going to choose the two points on the end point of the uh, the segment so I don't know if that that shows up very well but I've highlighted or I've selected the endpoint on uh, or both endpoints on this long segment in here so having chosen that I'm gonna create a datum plane and then I need to play with the uh, attachment mode and I believe it wants zero let's see so now that the, the plane is running through those two points, but it isn't running in the direction that I want. 
So I'm going to try rotating it by 90 degrees. Okay, so now you can see that I have the datum plane running right through uh, or right parallel to that, uh, that segment and uh, rotated 90 degrees, which is what I want because the next part of the segment is going to lie parallel to this. So with that, I can say OK. I can select the plane and I can create the sketch on it. And uh, uh, so I now have the, uh, the the center point here is the end point of that segment. So I can uh, again choose a um, I'm going to first draw an arc and just roughly I want to set one end point and then I'm going to draw a, uh, a straight segment coming off from the end point of this and uh, kind of angling back up to the center and you'll see why in a second. Uh, now I can set some constraints to lock that down uh, and I'll put the end point uh, on the line. I'll also put the center on the line and I'm going to set the radius of this. Uh, let's set the diameter of this. Um, and we want this about 2.5, I think. And then I can, uh, what I want is for these to be tangent to each other. So uh, that may mean that I need to remove this point online here this constraint up oh, and do that wanted to delete the constraint not the line and now I'll select these two segments and make them tangent okay and now the only thing that uh, is left the two degrees of freedom are the uh, are the positions of this endpoint and so I can just select this and lock it um, and, I, and set, uh, I'll set some, some coordinates on this that are some con uh, distance constraints that make sense, about eight millimeters and about negative 1.5. Uh, that's not too bad. Okay, I'll hide the datum plane and we should be able to see so I've got the helix, which continues into the straight segment on this plane and then turns 90 degrees and folds back on itself. So that gives me half of the spring as a profile. And now what I need to do is sweep my original uh, the, the, the profile of the wire along this whole thing. But unfortunately, I haven't found a way to make this work by sweeping along the entire uh, all. all, all or both sketches and the helix. Uh, so what I can do is uh, do it in pieces. Now, if you find a way to do this all at once, I'm sure there is a way, but I haven't found it. If you do, please uh, leave a comment down below. I'm always looking for better ways of doing these things and by no means am I an expert. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and sweep this. So what I wanna do is uh, select my original sketch, uh, not the original sketch, the, the sketch of the profile and do the sweep along path. And I can choose the object, and I believe if you choose the object, it, it gives both edges that are in there. And now you see if I tried to like add an edge, it, it won't let me, it, it'll break. It, it will continue it on, but now it's it's uh, misplaced because the, the profile's up here and the line is down there. So I don't wanna do that. Um, instead, I want to choose the uh, the helix and say OK. Now what I'm going to do is uh, zoom in here. I'm going to select this end face and I'm going to do a sketch right on the face. And then I'm going to draw a circle. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to add a reference to the outer edge of that face. And then I'm going to draw a circle locked to the center and then set the uh, the radius to be equal to that reference edge. That fully constrains that. And now I can take the sketch that was created and continue my sweep and select the object here and you'll see that it now continues it down to the end. 
And then I have to do the same thing one more time. Select the, the face, sketch on the face. There it is. Uh, and then draw a circle locked to the center and make the uh, diameters the same. Then I can close that sketch, do the sketch, continue the profile, and select the object here, and that will create uh, the next segment in, uh, in my spring. Okay, so that gives me half the spring. Now I need to create the other half. So what I can do is choose the body, and I'm gonna create a link, and then select the link, and uh, well, let's, let's rename these things so they're a little clearer. Spring, and we'll call it uh, spring copy, or spring link. Now if I select the one in uh, the, the link in the tree and transform it, now, uh, let me, uh, uh, if I, the first thing that I tried to do on this was a mirror, and, uh, but there isn't a mirror axis that, that works. If you mirror it along the center line, uh, you, you won't get what you're expecting. So, you know, if I, uh, what you actually, what we actually want to do is we want to rotate the copy around the center point so that the, this face ends up mirrored against the other. So it's not really, a, uh, it's not a mirror transformation, it's a, uh, it's a rotational transformation. So I'll transform this, and you'll see that if I rotate this piece right around the center, I end up with uh, the faces at, uh, meeting exactly where they should because this was all created around the, uh, the original origin. And that gives me my completed shape. So now if I want to take these two, uh, switch back to the part workbench and do a fusion of them. Um, now I've got one object that's a fusion of both of them uh, and I could use that in the TechDraw workbench to get a drawing and I can also modify how it's viewed. So I'm gonna switch its view over to uh, the display mode to shaded and th that'll take off those uh, uh, edges the the lines on it and if I really wanted to improve the view I can uh, go to the appearance and darken up its material a little bit and say that this is made out of uh, steel and now it's kinda looking a little bit more like a spring so that's how I did that. Uh, like I said, if you've got a better way to do it or can uh, make it more parametric, as I have it right now, I can go back and adjust any of those dimensions. Uh, and But I'll, I'll still end up with several manual steps. And some of the positioning isn't, uh, isn't as parametric as I'd like. Uh, but it does seem to work and it meets the needs. That took me originally about six different attempts to, to get it to work like that. Uh, like I said, if you've got a better way, please let me know in the comments. Hope that's helpful, and we'll see you in the next video.